Hey everyone, this is Joseph Esparza from Lake Paris State Recreation Area. I'm a park interpreter specialist here. Today on our Lake Paris adventure, we're going to look at the history, the story of the lake itself. How this sparkling jewel came to be in one of the driest reaches of the Inland Empire. Today we're going to look at some of the different aspects of the water and the features that feed and protect this water. What we hope is that we can come to understand how and why Lake Paris exists and how it provides the people of Southern California with ever important water security but also quality outdoor recreation. So come along, I think this is definitely going to be one you are not going to want to miss. If I were to tell you the story of the modernization of the American West, I think certainly one of the most reoccurring themes we would see would be the struggle for water. There's really a long explanation here, but I'm going to explain it anyways because it really touches on the heart and the purpose of Lake Paris. So let's go ahead and walk through this importance together. As you know, all life requires kinds of water for survival. In human history, this is just as important. Human and water interactions has been at the heart of the human story from the very beginning. Even the oldest and the greatest of the ancient civilizations utilized and later manipulated water in order to foster their own growth. So think of Mesopotamia and irrigation, Egypt and the Nile, Rome and its aqueducts, Aztec farming and its canals. You see, without a reliable source of water, advanced civilizations just aren't possible. Now, let's look around the area we have here. While the Native Americans sustainably collected water, the mass migrations of white settlers into the American West and California brought a new reality. This land just was not sustainable for a large population due to its lack of water. Now, you can think of today, but wait, California is the most populous state in the country. There are already almost 40 million people here in our state. How did this come to be? The answer is simply human innovation. Southern California has some of the best weather in the world, as you know, and it is also one of the most beautiful, most one of the most biodiverse locations on the planet. It is also dangerously dry for months on end. Now, early Californians knew this, and they would do whatever they could to increase their water resources. So starting around 1910, the city of Los Angeles, under the direction of William Mulholland, orchestrated the California Water Wars, essentially taking the majority of the Eastern Sierra's Owens River and diverting it to Southern California. Now this worked for a while until the population grew again. Southern California would find itself in the, in the place that it needed more water. Now, during the Great Depression, federal projects completed the Colorado River Aqueduct and many of its reservoirs. This supplemented Southern California's water needs and allowed for post-World War II population booms that gave us much of the cities, the communities, the houses, the infrastructure that we know today here in our region. Now, just a few years later, another problem was on the horizon. In fact, it was the same problem. Southern California needed water again. Now this is where one of the greatest engineering feats of all time, the California State Water Project, came in. Developed in the 1950s and with its main sections completed in the 1970s, the State Water Project is the second largest aqueduct in the world and the largest in the whole Western Hemisphere. It is widely considered one of the wonders of modern engineering. So what is it? So basically, it's a system of 441 miles of canals, pipes, and reservoirs, which starts all the way in the Bay Area and transports millions of acres feet of water from the Sacramento and Feather River basins in Northern California across the Central Valley over the steep Grapevine Mountains until it ends here at Lake Paris State Recreation Area. This is the official stop of the most impressive water system in the nation. On May 19th, 1973, the floodgates were opened and Lake Paris was born. So why did the designers pick the Lake Paris Valley and did they know what it was going to end up being used for? 
Well, they picked this valley precisely because of geography. You see, the designers knew that the California aqueduct crossed the infamous San Andreas Fault. And in the event of a major earthquake, and if the pipeline burst somewhere, they wanted to be sure there was a lake with water for emergency pur purposes on the other side of the fault. That's where Lake Paris comes in. Now, as many of you know also, Lake Paris was recently retrofitted with a, a concrete reinforcement to help against a potential earthquake on the San Jacinto Fault. Now, why the Paris Valley? Well, the land was low enough and the location um, was cheap enough to buy. And these local hills that we have around here um, really helped gather the water into one particular area. So for many of the early years, the water was used strictly for emergency purposes. But over time, it evolved to be used on a regular basis and is now consumed by thousands. Many other lakes in the region don't offer the same kind of recreational opportunities that Lake Paris does. Now, why is that? Well, it's because of the Davis-Dalwig Act passed back in 1961. It mandated that if the people of California had to pay for the aqueduct system, then they should have the choice to recreate or the ability to recreate in it. So part of the mandate then of Lake Paris is to provide high quality outdoor recreation. Well, the state water project and the land around here, the water and the land are owned by the Department of Water Resources. The areas surrounding Lake Paris are managed by state parks. And that is why we call it Lake Paris State Recreation Area. I'm on the Lake Paris Dam right now. This dam is actually really unique in that it's not one of your typical curved dams that you would imagine on a reservoir, but it is actually an earth-filled long dam made out of materials from the hillside right behind me. This dam is about 130 feet high and is over two miles long. It is also leakier than most dams, but don't worry. You see, the land they built this lake on was out of alluvial soil or eroding uh, sand and sediment, not bedrock. So this contributes to massive amount of groundwater that seeps into the soil and then on the other side of the dam as well. But then that is collected by water utility agencies and given to our local communities. So this dam is also spectacularly beautiful. You just have a look. So the water rushes into Lake Paris in what's called the Santa Ana pipeline. It passes underground all the way from uh, around Silverwood Lake area near San Bernardino all the way to here and it empties out just by Sail Cove at the end by the fishing dock right around there that area and it's underwater so it can't be seen but that's where Lake Paris's water is actually filled from this hill that we're looking at is the siphon for the lake it's like a large check on the lake in case the Santa Ana pipe ever broke Remember, that's the pipe that feeds our lake. So that, that pipe passes through the San Bernardino Valley in Colton, which is actually hundreds of feet lower than Lake Paris SRA. If the pipe ever did break and the designers feared that maybe one day it would in a giant earthquake, just to be safe, they built right here a giant siphon underground, right there, that little hump. So the pipe goes up and then down on the other side to keep the water in Lake Paris. So basically this pipe goes from Sail Cove, right, underneath here, on that area, underground, and then it's charted up here as an extra check using gravity so that in case this pipe ever did break, right, the water from Lake Paris wouldn't filter out towards lower elevations near San Bernardino or Colton. So that's what we called the siphon right there. I'm out here now at the far southern end of Lake Paris, and this is the outlet of Lake Paris. So this is basically where the water goes out of the lake, and it, from there it is either transferred into a treatment center, from there it goes on to our homes, businesses, and our yards and parks, or it goes into another pipeline to feed another area of need, another reservoir, or another treatment plant somewhere else. So that is the Lake Paris outlet area right here. As you can see, Lake Paris truly is a sparkling jewel in the Inland Empire, and it's one of the most amazing resources of our park. In addition to being a place of water security, the park offers recreational opportunities, habitat conservation, and wildlife and 
uh, cultural site preservation. Lake Paris exists to provide the people of Southern California with ever important water security and quality outdoor recreation. We examine this today first by looking at the role of water in the history of the American West and in California, then by understanding the unique geographic and technical aspects of the lake. Finally, we visited some of the lake's most key features. So remember, use water and recreate responsibly. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to comment, to like, to subscribe, and to share with a friend. We hope to see you out at the lake and on the water pretty soon. Take care, everyone.